Okay, so like I said, I was going to, you'll have to excuse my creaky stool. It's the only way I can get to the top of this thing and be able to see what I'm doing. But anyways, uh, what I said I was going to do last time, as that is drying, I decided I'm going to put a quarter inch by half inch spruce spar. And that's what I've got here. Uh, the process is really <laughs> more of the same. I just took a ruler, I lined it up with the edge of this uh, nacelle spar, we'll call it, or shear web, and I just transferred that line all the way across. I took the quarter inch spar, I put it on edge, and just used that to trace the, the width of it. And then I just started, I took a, a zona saw, and I cut here, and then I used my Dremel tool with a end mill bit to really clean out in between the saw cuts. And then down through here, again, my one of my more my most favorite tools is this little permagrit slot slotting tool. This one is six millimeter. I also have a three millimeter one. It works perfect for just sanding little slots out of stuff. So I use that to really smooth out the bottom of the cuts here in this aircraft ply, one of these hardwood uh, triangle stocks. And then I also used it to make the slot here in the foam. And this one just so happens to be six millimeters by half of an inch. So it's perfect for that spar. So as long as you make it to where it sits within your part, it will be fine. I probably need a little bit more adjustment here. And then I just did that all the way down to here. Um, you can see I've got it drawn on this plywood piece that I put in. I'm currently waiting for this to finish drying. And then I'm gonna notch this as well. And then I'll probably just get some brass tube and I'll use the brass tube to bore holes inside that fuselage as much as I possibly can. The, the more I can get that spar in there, the stronger it will be. So for now, I'm really just waiting on glue to dry, which happens a lot when you're working on foam core stuff. <laughs> you're constantly waiting on things to dry. But for now, that's all I've got. We'll bring you back when I start doing something else. Okay, folks, I'm getting ready to drill the hole for this rear spar to go into the fuselage. What I have taken is just a piece of brass L angle, and I'm going to heat up the end of it. I'm going to lay it here in the channel, and then I'm just going to slowly push it in there to get some uh, to get to get it to melt into the the location I want it. I'm going to try not to burn myself in the process of this. I'm just going to use a torch here. You can see I'm just going to heat up the end of it till it's a little warm. Place it here. And then just drive it into the core. And then pull it out. And then flip it 180 degrees. Same thing. Just drive it in there and that creates a little bit of a channel for it now i'm going to do same thing i'm going to heat it up here with a torch again and i'm going to flip it upside down to where it is touching the the top balsa wood wing skin and then just let it follow the the wing skin to make the rest of that channel there we have half of it. Heat it up and do the other half. And this will create, to create a hole, but it's gonna be an oversized hole just because it's gonna, as the foam melts away from the, the channel but basically it'll give us mostly what we want. I'm gonna just use it to, to clean out any foam that might be down inside there. All right, that's, that is all this bar. So this is about four feet of wing spar inside there. You can see that's how much we have. That goes almost all the way to the 
to the root of the wing. And I know just from looking at the uh, the undersides, there's a small little hatch for you to get to uh, the servo wiring and everything going out to the wing. I know that that whole center section of, of it is actually glassed. So that will do very well for uh, for reinforcing the center section. I have gone ahead and taken the time to uh, make up the wing skin. I'm actually going to install this wing skin and that spar all at once. I made this wing skin just like I had, like just like I did the horizontal stabilizer skins. Uh, you'll notice that it does not have the hole for this hard point for the wing attachment to make that. I've literally just gone around with a sanding drum and cleaned up around that disc. I'm going to put the, the wing skin here in place and then I'm just going to go around the skin where the edge of that disc is. And I'm just going to press on it to make an indentation on the bottom side. And it's very hard to see, but you can see here is the indentation right there. Now I'm just going to go trim that out and sand it to shape and then come back to see how it fits. Yep. And there we go. There is another skin ready to be put on the area. All right, folks, there we have another replacement skin applied to the B29 wing. This, uh, yeah, this is still going a lot quicker than I originally expected this to go. So things are progressing very nicely. I fully suspect that the fuselage will be rolled upside down probably before I have to leave for work late next week so I'm gonna let this kind of kick off a little bit like we did or like I did the the leading edge to where it'll allow it to bubble up a little bit and bring up the skin level just a little bit more uh, even with the rear the trailing edge skin here and then once it kind of bubbles up a little bit I'll put some sandbags on it to uh, to help hold it this area here towards the the wing split is actually pretty good how it is so i'll probably put some sandbags here and then i may even put one right here up against the the root edge of it because that's that's pretty close to it's just right here towards the back pretty much right where the big hole is that's a little off worst case scenario we got to come in here with a little bit of wood filler and and bring that up, height up a little bit to match the rest of the wing skin but for now i'm gonna go spend time with the family and get some dinner Y'all have a great evening.